let's start by reviewing what net flows are. Net flows are information that the routers and switches and network devices send about the traffic that they see actually coming and consists of, you know, this type of information that you see here, mainly source IP and source port, destination IP, destination port, but most importantly, you know, this, uh, you know, source by destination by. This is what allows you to see whether something, a lot of traffic or a little traffic is actually going there or, or any traffic at all or it's been attempted, but uh, not, not responded. And by the way, Curator treats the, the a, a flow going in one direction with the response coming in the other direction as a single flow, a single entity, which is what you wanted it to, uh, to actually do. So what Curator can do with that information is that Curator can actually combine events or logs and flows and put them together, correlate abnormalities into those, and give you a single offense. Let's take any one in here, for example, this one. Uh, it's actually going there, and if you see, there's a bunch of uh, events and uh, even more flows. And if we display the rules that actually contributed all together into this, some of them comes from uh, flows. This one, for example, connection to a remote uh, proxy, uh, uh, local, this is a classic one, local window server scanner. When 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 something scans your network, there are no logs in there. These are just pure flows. Uh, you know, when the machine pings, you know, from the same source IP, the, the same destination IP is ping on different ports. Well, that's a scanning. And, and by virtue of the flow, Curator can detect that and can combine it with uh, this event, for example. That is, uh, something has detected a, a worm, some sort of a... The device detects the presence of the worm. But also, notice that in here we can see that Curator can combine that also, the f that flow information, with information coming from threat intelligence sources. In this particular case, the free one that comes with Curator, the X-Force. So, in fact, Curator is saying, well, some of that flows are going to hosts that do uh, uh, anonymization, so that might not be a good thing. So, again, you see the confluence uh, of all those sources of information uh, together into a single offense. Also, if you feed Curator with vulnerability data from your network scanners, which I think you should do for very many reasons, in terms of with the flows, some of the things that you can see that you can actually investigate, say, well, out of all these vulnerabilities that I have in all my system, which of them are having flows and having data going to? So you can actually do a simple search and do, you know, in in the parameters in here, uh, they since associated vulnerability service traffic being seen. And let me put actually here the full year, 360. 65 days and you can specify whatever time it is and then uh, perform a search and actually you see well out of all those vulnerabilities that, as you saw before there were far many more of these these are the ones that have seen traffic so these are the ones that are probably the most relevant because there's activity going into those hosts that have uh, vulnerabilities so here I'm looking at some of the rules to show you the capabilities that Curator has of you know, detecting anomalies with the, the information coming from those flows. In this particular rule in here, the NC host port scan detected by a foreign host, notice that in here is a combination of both logs and flows. You see, the, the first condition says a foreign host on events and flows which are detected in the local system, and when the flows or events, you know, any one of those, matches the following definition, they are part of your of the, the, of the DMC components on the DMC because actually this is telling that something is scanning your DMC and the context is remote to local or remote to remote you know and this is the beauty of Curator is that Curator by virtue of the network hierarchy knows what is actually coming in and what is actually coming out uh, and in here the last one is you know and with any one of these events and these are uh, logs you know happens five times over four, uh, six destination within one minute. Again, not a very act full speed scanner. Maybe it's a scan that is, uh, you know, at least going slowly to try to avoid detection. Well, it won't be able to avoid detection with this particular rule. And in fact, we can actually see this rule in here in action. And as you see, it's a combination of 63 events and 21 
uh, flows, if we uh, open the actual offense and display the rule, we, we will see that rule precisely in action. Let's see another example of this individual rule that combines both logs and flows. So this one is actually saying, well, if I see any attempts of scanning, and notice all the type of scanners that Curator detects uh, out of the box, right? All these. But also is followed by an authentication success, meaning the guy scanned the stuff and I then was able to, to do uh, a successful login within 30 minutes of that scan. Well, that's how this rule actually fires. We're going to go back and analyze a few more rules and you know how they, they leverage on the information on the flows. But before I forget, I want to you know show you another aspect of the importance of flows. When you feed flows into Curator, and I'm here on the asset database of Curator, notice that Curator, by virtue of the type of port, I mean, it can do far more when you have more than just NetFlow, but just with NetFlow alone, which this video is all about, notice that by virtue of the port, it can discover all these type of uh, you know servers. And actually, you can define your specific one uh, as well. But you know, if let's say that I'm, I want to identify, uh, you know, my uh, DNS servers, for example, and this is what is called passive scanning. I'm not really actually scanning. It's based on the information that I saw coming. I can tell whether this particular uh, ports and, and protocol has been uh, used for that. So when I query for DNS server, my system is telling me, well, yeah, you have uh, the quad nine, which I ha is an approved notice that he has that uh, check mark in there. And all, all these, are these uh, legit? Are they wrong? Should you approve them once you identify them? Or this can help you identify when uh, a strenuous uh, DNS server is added. An FTP server is also another example. And and actually, real real world application is uh, th this has helped companies detect. For example, there was a case on on a on a rogue individual who was actually deploying an FTP server for getting information out, but he was careful enough to remove it every Friday because he knew that on the weekends the company would perform the scan. Well, the scanners never found it, but guess what? Curator did because he saw that there was active traffic on that uh, port 21. So server discovery is another uh, the reason why you may actually want to send NetFlow data into Curator. Moving on. Another reason is beacon in detecting, and I'm not going to go into detail to keep this video short, but uh, if you look into this uh, channel, if you look for the beaconing, you'll find this in which I explain in detail how Curator can detect those type of, you know, traffic in which, you know, hey boss, should I do something? And quiet, or you get a reply. You know. So that beaconing is a very simple search that Curator can do by virtue of getting information from the net flows. See another example. Here we have a rule that says, you know, when the content is local to remote, is from the inside out, and we get that for the network hierarchy, and the flow or an event matches any one of the following definition, SSH port. Again, we, we get that information from the, uh, from the actual uh, flow. And then when we get events and, and recon event, they are this building block you can investigate later. There's a bunch of things that curator detect at recon events and, and suspicious event from the same source more than five minutes that cause more than 29 destinations that's a type of scanning uh, within 10 minutes these rules fire here is an example of a rule that actually fires uh, this is for detecting low bandwidth uh, ddos type of attacks when, when the traffic is outbound the source the packet rate is greater than 1,000 packets per second. The protocol, like all this information that comes from the flow is TCP when the source packet is greater than 60,000. So again, is information coming from the net flows. Let us see this one. This is uh, detecting, you know, uh, mail senders. Is somebody sending spam from your company? Well, they went there or with, uh, first of all, it checks is not internal. It's not local to local, so it's something going out. And you know, you get uh, this uh, policy violation of mail, mail sender 10 times within the same source IP within one hour, and not when is one of my legal, legit mail servers. And there's a table in Curator for, for that. And 
when the flow matches any one of the following category definition, successful communication. So this is kind of saying, this is not an attempt of communication. This is something that actually talk back and forth. How does curator detect that? Let's actually look at the building block. So here I pivoted on the building blocks on the rules and looking at successful communication. It's actually see how curator by virtue of the flows again, on that information on, on, on amount of traffic, it says, well, when the source by packet ratio is greater than 80 bytes per packet and the destination by per packet ratio is greater than 80 by per packet. That means that this was some, you know, substantial traffic. There's certainty on that because of the net flow. If you add the free component, the UBA into Curator, which I think you should, uh, then it will be able to detect who are risky users, who are the guys that are doing things that whose risk has accumulated in a way that they are deemed risky users. And here you have a rule that says, well, when one of those users that are risky are sending bytes greater than 200,000 out, well, that's something that I may want to check. You're risky and you're sending a bunch of stuff out. Again, we get this information from the flows uh, feeding UBA. Let's see another example of UBA with flows. And in this particular case, we are using what is called time series. Notice a sophisticated type of analysis. It's looking at the, you know, statistical behavior of your user and the time series is doing all this computation for you. And it's saying, well, this is uh, abnormal based on what I have actually seen. This is not even machine learning, which UBA has on its own. This is standard statistic analysis based on uh, time series. And if you are not familiar with time series, uh, again, I made it a while back, uh, a year ago, two videos that explain how time series actually worked. One more thing. Uh, I made another video and looks like I'm promoting my own videos in here, but uh, I made a video that shows how you map flows into uh, to applications into Curator. And for example, we know that in the in the field for uh, traffic and application in, in in standard net flows, you cannot determine, for example, this is my SAP traffic, this is my Westphere traffic, this is, you know, X, Y, and Z. So what you can do is that you can do in that mapping and say, well, in this particular case in the video, anything that is, you know, from this destination IP address, 10, 100, 30, 206, and that port, 90, 80, that I get that information from the flow, so I can make it be my SAP traffic, my Westfield traffic, my whatever. And therefore, you now can have on the rules seeing they say, well, if I see SAP traffic going out, and just by virtue of the flow, this amount of SAP traffic going out, you know, fire an offense, so use that in, in your logic. And I can be, you know, giving you more reasons. I, this, this video is far longer than I uh, wanted it to be. But as you see there, I hope that this gives you some of the reasons on why you should bring NetFlow traffic into Curator. If you are sending it to another operational type of tool for analyzing traffic, it doesn't cost you anything else to send it as well to Curator. You're already doing that. And if you are not collecting that information from your network appliances, I hope that this video invites you to actually do that.